Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Coffee with Casey. Today, we're going to talk about technology. We're going to talk about the 16 pieces of technology just to get a listing to its pre-launch state. So I went to Samson yesterday, Samson Properties, and they had the, all of the things you can do, all the technology you can, you can use. It's massive. I mean, it's just massive, the technology that's available for realtors, buyers, and sellers in today's market. So working through all of that, every piece of technology has to be tested. Everyone's got to be put in its place and how do we use it and you know how it's going to play in the big picture because really tomorrow I'm going to go to a, a, a big top producer thing. So all of the big hitters are going to be there uh, and I'm going to be doing a round table. There's going to be three to 500 realtors there and I'm going to do a round table. One of the questions is what's your favorite technology? And I'm like, well, well technology is not a, it's not a shot. It's, it's cocktail, right? It's cocktail. It's uh, an integration of all of the best technologies to produce what you want to produce. So I'm going to show you that today. I'm going to show you how we do that today and what our best technologies are that help sellers and help us produce the best real. So let me go ahead and go. So let's take a look at today's, at today's what we're going to talk about. Technology is a cocktail of the listings, right? What are all the things we use to, you know, do the pricing? What are the technology we use to do the marketing? What's the technology we use to do to do everything, to do our predictive analysis and all of that? So let's let's make a quick run through. The first technology is Excel, which has been around since all of history and the most effective tool anybody's going to use in any profession. So if you know how to perfect Excel, it can build models for you. It can tell you, I mean, for us. We use MLS data that's imported into our proprietary software on, on Excel, and it builds these models. And some of the models are telling you, hey, this was the price, here's where it got to, and here's where it is today. So that's important. Prices have fallen eight to 10%. You need to know what your house is worth. And when I said one of the topics today was gonna to be the truth will set you free, the truth will set you free. You need to, as a realtor, come clean with your sellers. I know they want one, two, and they saw their their neighbors get one, two. But that was then. Prices have fallen at least $100,000 since the second quarter in, in our market. Like, let's call it 8%. They've fallen 8% over since the second quarter. So that's got to be recognized when people list. And, and let me tell you, they're not recognizing it yet because every week I say, give me all of the active homes that come on this week, went under contract at pending, and then withdrew unsold. There are more homes withdrawing every week that are coming in pending. Very few pending, but a lot of withdrawal. So, so we need to know when we're talking about the pricing, we need to have very sophisticated tools. So top t two tools on pricing, MLS data, um, uh, manipulated by pricing models on an Excel spreadsheet. So that's that, and you can see on the chart here, and if you're just listening to the podcast, I've got charts of a pricing model that tells you what your house is worth. Another chart that shows you the ups and downs of the market and where your house is today. And then the where we're going is that market snapshot of what's happening currently in the last seven days, what's going under contract, what's come on the market and what's got withdrawn. Very important. So that's the first set of technology. The next one is, once we've come to an agreement here on, on pricing and whatnot, now it's the marketing technology. The marketing technology is, a, again, a cocktail of sophisticated websites where we create our own website, sophisticated tools when doing social media. Let me give you a perfect example. We just sold a $2.15 million house to a person that was looking in McLean, was not looking in Fairfax Station. He was looking in McLean. So we targeted buyers in McLean looking at $2 million houses. And sure enough, we showed him this house. He loved it. He came out. He wrote, he didn't write a check. He paid cash, $2.15 million in cash for the house. Was not looking in that area. So, so what are the best technology tools when we're dealing with marketing? Well, you've got to have a custom website. You, because it's got to capture people that are coming in to see it. We need their name and we need their phone number and we need their email address. So when they come in and look at that house, I need the buyer information. Does it scare off some people? Sure. Uh, what do we care? I'd rather have 20 people that gave me their name, email, and phone number 
than just looky loos that were out there just for the heck. These are the serious buyers that are going through. So sellers need to know that if we're going to promote my house out there, how are you going to know who's looking at it? And how are you going to get any names, phone numbers, and addresses? Well, that technology is called Chime, right? So we hook up a custom website done by Agent Image, custom web. It's sent out social media. So we use geofencing. We use Google Ads. These are all part of the technology formula. Then when they get to the custom website, they go in. Now they hook their name and everything into Chime. Chime is the database where we can follow up with them in tech. So, so the marketing part of this is so sophisticated that those five elements of technology are what get the home seen in front of the right people at the right place at the right price range. All right, so let's go to the next. The next one is the technology of, of pictures. So everybody's going to see your listings online. Well, some people are still doing it with, with their iPhones. Oh, the iPhone pictures are awesome. That's not a professional picture. And even flash photography, which is what some of the major people use, not state-of-the-art technology. State-of-the-art technology is a thing called flambient photography. And if you look at this picture, the picture on the left is flambient photography. The picture on the right is washed out, right? Because that's flash. Flash washes things out. If you look on the far left, that top picture, that's what flambient photography looks like when you're looking through the windows, identifying what trees there are in the backyard. Because really, our buyers in Vienna are coming from Arlington. They're looking at condos and townhouses in their backyard. They want to know that I can see trees in that backyard, especially when you have a beautiful river birch back there. The one on the bottom, that's flash photography. So see, that's old school, right? When you take a picture with flash photography, that's what the windows look like. So tell me, if you're showing a house to a person in Arlington, do you want them to see the top picture, which is very clear and crystal and see the green trees, or the bottom picture where all the windows look gray? On the right side of the page, do you want them to see the really nice hardwood floors, or do you want those to be whited out? So, so the technology that we would use in preparing the listing, one of the main technologies is flambient photography, right? Now, there's 16 different that's why I say it's a cocktail, not a shot, right? And at the meeting tomorrow, they're going to ask me the question, what's your favorite technology? And if I lean back and somebody goes, well, it's not a, it's not a shot, it's a cocktail. And let me tell you about the cocktail. I'm going to lose my mind at this meeting in front of 300 realtors because they're, they listen to this too. But, but these 16 technology points that we have, this is one of the main things. I want my pictures to be great. I've got to get that guy to stop looking at McLean, come over to Fairfax Station, where he doesn't even know where Fairfax Station is. And he's looking for two and a half, two point one five million dollars. It's got to look right. Everything's got to look right. So then let's go to the one of the biggest uh, points of technology. So we priced it right, we staged it right, we've got the technology, we've got the websites, we've we've got the geofencing, we put it out. Everybody in the world has seen it. All that technology is kicking in. Now comes the final technology before launch. And that is a couple things. Showing time, which is tells us how many people have registered to come see the property. You could have 1,000 people, 2,000, 15,000 people looking at it. But if nobody's coming to see it, but if nobody's coming to see it, it's worthless, right? So this is a showing time, very important. This is what's called the hit counter. The hit counter tells me how many people are in your buyer pool? I could tell a seller how many people are in the buyer pool and then how many people are looking at his house, how many people love his house, and how many people are thinking about his house. So this is called a hit counter. So we rely on this to tell us. Anybody interested? We rely on this to tell us anybody coming. So if nobody's interested, nobody's coming, we're at the wrong price. We need to drop the price. Or if we have a lot of people interested, but nobody's coming to see it, we need to get to the lower level. You need people in the house. So we just had one, it's on grist mill, and it tested and it said, um, it said, uh, you got seven favorites. That's fine with us, that's perfect. That, that tells us we got people that love this house, but only one showing, two showing. So, so I said, you know, we can stay here, but I really need to get some people in this house. We're looking for the buyer pool. The predictive analysis, the technology we use is looking for the buyer pool. The biomass or the buyer pool is not 
was not at 900. We dropped it to 850. Now, I'll talk to you next week after we've launched the listing, but I guarantee you, we launch it for 850, we get 900. Why? Because the buyer pool comes in, they love it, they're going to bid it up to, to 900. Trust me, it's going to sell for $900,000, even though we dropped the price to 850. But the technology of showing time, hit counter, you know, social media, how many people love it on social media, how many people are calling, you know, all of these Google Analytics, how many people came to your website? How long did they stay? What are they, are they women? Are they men? Are they coming from out of town? Are they coming from Arlington, Alexandria? Where are these people coming from? We have all that data. How can I pick one favorite technology when I got MLS, Excel, geofencing, flambient photography, Google ads, Google analytics, uh, hit counters, showtime, Whew. Which one can I not have? I'm a football coach. That's like saying, well, you could play offense. You got the best quarterback in town. You got great running backs, but you don't have a left guard. If you don't have a left guard, you don't have a football team, right? So, so everything's got to be in place and it's got to work in harmony. It's got to work as a team. So 16 elements, that's the cocktail. And that's prior, that's prior to the kickoff of the listing. And we got a whole other group of technology that we'll talk about, but I think for now, that'll cut pretty much blow your mind. So I know a lot of people at Samson yesterday, I met down at Fredericksburg. By the way, Donnie's done an incredible job. I mean, at Samson Property, he's done an incredible job. He puts together these things where it just walks everyone through. Now I've been doing this for a long time, but even I got a page of information out of that meeting, trying to find out, is there any other technology, something new, that I could integrate into these 16 pieces to make it even better. See, that's the job of a professional realtor. And that's why I'm not worried. They say, well, you know, technology, it'll remove the realtors, AI, remove the realtors. That's just ridiculous. That's just, it's just not, it's not even worth talking about. But I will tell you what's worth talking about. There's a big lawsuit and it's on everybody's mind. Everybody's talking about it. Well, if you're not, if you're in the business, everybody's talking about it. If you're not in the business, you may not have noticed. But the National Association of Realtors, along with a couple of major real estate companies, have gotten sued. And they've gotten sued for commissions. They've gotten sued for um, price fixing, right? Saying that everybody should pay 6% for their commissions, and that's what you train your agents. And there's no defense of that. From Coldwell Banker to Long & Foster to Keller Williams to... to Compass to all of them. Riker, you're worth 6%. You charge 6%. You got to charge 6% because you're worth it. Well, here's the reason why everybody's got to charge 6% because they give a big portion to their broker. And the net that they keep is, is, is considering the work that they have to do over a long period of time and losing listings and having them withdraw. They've got to make a lot of money because they're unsuccessful in a lot of listings. But they say, you must charge 6%. And if you don't, you're a discount broker. So I've been fighting this the whole time. But the fact is that Samson Properties doesn't charge a commission to its agents. Samson Properties owns a settlement title company, a mortgage company, says, hey, if you can work with us with that, we appreciate it. But you don't have to. That's the model. But because Cardinal is so good, and because they treat us like kings, rock stars, and the mortgage company is good and competitive and professional and all that. We use them because, yeah, they're the best. So, but but Samson Properties getting back commission doesn't take any of our commission. So instead of me charging five or five and a half, I, I don't have to charge that. I give two and a half to the agents that are selling our house. We'll talk about that in a minute. Two and a half to the agents, and we keep two. And when you do one hundred sixty million dollars a year, two's enough. So. So think of, of what, what our team really is, is the Costco of the market, right? So Whole Foods charges $25 for a strip steak, New York strip. They're awful. They're awful. And every time I get one, I say, please, God, don't, don't, don't ever buy another Whole Foods, New York strip. They're, they're terrible. And I can tell you why I know. Because if you take a strip steak from, from Whole Foods, you have to saw it so much your arm gets tired. That's how tough it is. Costco has New York strips, fraction of the cost, 
it's three cut. One, two, three, you're done. So the meat at Costco is better than the meat at Whole Foods at a, probably a half the cost. So, so it, when they say get what you pay for, that's not true. You get a lot more at Costco than you do it. That's why they're so big. That's why it's packed. That's why it's always packed, right? That's why their meat is better. Their seafood is better. Everything is better there. So, so the fact of, you know, you got to charge 6%. If you do four and a half, it, it's, um, you know, that's a uh, discount. That's what they got sued for. They're getting sued for what I've been talking about for the last 15 years. You don't have to charge 6%. Charge four and a half. I'll give away two and a half to the selling agent, which is proper. And then keep 2% for ourselves. Our volume was bigger. We're, we do seven to eight times more than all the other agents, you know, Indiana, the average top 10 agent. That lets me afford the technology that consistently works. So what is the big lawsuit all over? Price fixing. Got to charge 6%. No, you don't. No, you don't. That's why I got sued and lost for $1.8 billion. So there's going to be a change in that, right, of how things work. But one of the things in the lawsuit says buyers don't need a realtor representing them on buying a house. Yes, they do. Because the technology I have, one of these days I'm going to do technology for a buyer. Yes, you do. You need to have, you need to know what that house is worth. You can't overpay for the house. You need to know how to find it. You need to know how to negotiate contracts. You need to know where their soft underbelly is. You need to buy a broker. So the first thing is, do we need a buyer broker? And what, what do we pay for a buyer broker? And what happens if the seller's not paying anymore for a buyer broker? Here's what you do. You definitely need a realtor. No doubt about it. They're invaluable. They definitely should make 2.5% because I'm telling you, after seeing what they have to go through, I'm offering them 2.5%. That's what they're worth. Now, some people, the Reynolds team and some teams like this are only offering 1% to those agents. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to go back to 1985. 1985, a guy named Jim Warkin that started Fire Brokerage, where we would have a buyer sign a buyer brokerage agreement saying that the seller who is offering to pay me 3%, we put language in, it says the seller is going to pay me on behalf of the buyer. So I'm representing the buyer. I can tell them anything I want. I can show them properties that aren't listed. I can show them uh, withdrawn. I can show them FISBOs. I can show them anything I want. It's all buyer broker. So all we have to do is go back in time. The, the selling agents should go back in time and say, we're going to sign a buyer broker agreement. And you're going to say, the buyer requests, the agent can't request it. The buyer must request it. The buyer requests the seller pay their agent 2.5% on behalf of the buyer. And it's in the contract. It's reflected in the price. So that way the buyer doesn't have to come out of pocket. It's in the contract. It's wrapped up. The buyer gets full representation. The, sell, the, the agent gets his 2.5%. Now, currently, 96% already offer 2.5% to their agents. Fine. Times are going to change. There are agents like that Reynolds team that are starting to cut it. And now they're still charging 6% and they're keeping five. Giving the agents one. That's not fair. That's, that's terrible. That's awful business. But when you have 70 people on your staff, I guess you got to pay some. You got to rip. Not, I'm not going to say rip anybody off, but I'm just saying you need to get a lot of money from that seller to pay for all that staff. And they're not helping you with the seller. So that's ridiculous. Pay four and a half. Listing agent. Listing agent could get two. But if they have a company like Long and Foster Compass or Keller Williams or one of those that has to get, you know, that they get a portion of the commission, then maybe it's 5%, not four and a half. Maybe it's five and a half, not four and a half. Right? But at Stampson, Stampson doesn't charge us any commissions. So I don't have to charge the seller. So we just do four and a half percent. We make it up on volume and we become the Costco of the of the industry. And that's that's kind of how that commission works. Do not ever fall for the fact that somebody is saying. Don't ever fall for the fact that somebody is saying you don't need a buyer agent. That's bullshit. I think it's terrible that anybody would give a buyer that advice, especially a new home buyer. 
Um, I think we need to protect the, the new home buyers. I think that's fine. But I'm just going to tell you that I just think that that um, if a buyer is out there and they're on their own, they're unsophisticated. Now, if they want to go directly to the listing agent and cut a deal and get some commission back or something, like closing costs or whatever, fine. Fine. As long as you're a sophisticated buyer. But I think that buyers need to have that kind of representation uh, to find a house if you're an unsophisticated buyer or you're a new buyer. So, so that's my two cents worth. That's what you're going to start to see. Um, it's all going to be solved by people signing buyer broker agreements, just like we did in two, 1985 with Jim Workington. I give him all the credit. He was a total visionary back then. And we were doing this long before any of this happened. I mean, that was... That was almost 40 years ago. That was 38 years ago we were doing buyer brokerage. And now they have to go back to it. But as long as agents go back to that, then everybody's the worst for wear and we don't have to worry about it. But you're going to hear a lot of squacking and a lot of real just sweating. There's a lot of companies whose model is get a portion of all the commissions and then uh, teach your agents that they're worth 6%. I was a Cobalt banker. You're worth 6%. Let me tell you why you're 6%. I was like, well, I have never taken a listing and I don't know what the hell to do. So how am I worth 6% again? And this, this is your list of why you're worth, that's a bunch of bull. Bull banker needed their commission. So that's what they told me to say. So, so anyways, when we look at it, um, it's going to change a little bit. Uh, you know, the, law, the attorneys have decided they're going to turn their, their scope on the real estate industry and have at it. But they're just saying the same thing I've been saying for a long time. You don't have to pay 6%. I just don't think you do. All right. So, and then the last part that I was going to talk about today was just the truth will set you free. There are some tough things that, that realtors have to um, tell sellers, not buyers, sellers. A couple of tough things, you know. Um, we put it out. It's not working. We need to get down. That's a tough thing tough conversation to say but you have to have it you have to tell the seller the truth you have to tell them where the market is or they're going to come back to you and say you said and why didn't we so while we're at this we talk about the truth will set you free let me go back to the technology real quick let me tell you what doesn't work let me tell you what what you never heard anything about in that conversation i just had artificial intelligence artificial intelligence right, is used by Google, uh, I mean, uh, Zillow, which is a dumpster fire. It's used by Realtor.com. They have three different uh, artificial intelligence programs. They can't get within $200,000 of themselves. You ought to see it as a joke. They can't get within two, $200,000. They can't get within 15% of each other. And that's the artificial intelligence on pricing. People type their name into Redfin and say, hey, my house worth it. No, it's not. That's not what your house is worth. That's not even the customary value. So what I do is I develop first, what is the customary value of a house? Then once we have the customary value of the house, we'll move up or down based on upgrades, condition, lot premium. You know, what have you put in the house? What's in the backyard? Is there a pool or is there a, pieces of wood that are chopping off the back door. So we need to know what upgrades are into a house, right? So so I spit out a customary number for a 2,500 square foot house built in 1975. This is what it's worth. Now let's go up and down from there. School district, lot, traffic, you know, all of that stuff. So, so the artificial intelligence right now, now Dustin is gonna be doing a seminar tomorrow on artificial intelligence and we have a really great sam hardman does a great job with artificial intelligence uh for samson properties he gives us classes on all of it but i think a lot of it is how like you communicate like you can put in some thoughts and then it'll write a story for you and i i don't have a comfort level letting somebody else talk on my behalf um i just i'm an old guy and i i just if I'm going to say something, it's going to be my words, not somebody else's. I'm not going to use somebody else's newsletter and put my name on it. Uh, I've, got, I've got to say it my way and the way what I think is true because I don't agree with everybody on everything. So so there, it's here. 
and it's going to get involved in things, but I haven't really found the artificial intelligence that can help us. One of the tie that into the technology. Now, maybe artificial intelligence is in geofencing because we're finding people that are looking at McLean and we're showing them houses. That's pretty damn smart. So maybe that's a form of artificial intelligence. But but as far as the AI is concerned, what's on the front lines are the people that are pricing houses with AI, and it sucks. It's awful. I tell them, don't look at it. Don't read it. Um, so I'm anxious to hear tomorrow. And if you're a realtor and you listen to this, um, I think Samson Properties is, is sponsoring this whole thing. Uh, Donnie put it together. It's it's big. I mean, there's some big agents there, and there are a lot of things that we want to. I don't I don't want somebody to tell me uh, how they do something as a trainer. They're just training people. I want to hear how the people that do it that make a lot of money. I mean, there are people there that do 100, do 150 million dollars. Uh, very respectful agents that are going to be there. So if you're a Samson agent and you haven't registered for this event, see if you can get into it. See if you can get a ticket for it. But it's it's gonna. I'm getting there early. And I'm listening to everything everybody has to say. A lot of it may be a bunch of BS, and I don't want to hear it. A lot of it I won't agree with, but there's going to be some nuggets in there. There's going to be some just some smart things that people are doing that I can integrate into those 16 steps that we do prior to, or in our selling pack when we're talking about you know once we launch the listing. So. You know, technology is here. It's not going anywhere. It's a cocktail. It's not a shot. You know, you drink a cocktail, you're going to make it through the night. If you start drinking shots, you're not going to make it through the night, right? You're going to wake up with a headache and it's going to be a failure and it's going to be a dumpster fire. So stay away from the shots, stay with the cocktails. And, uh, and in real estate, that means a technology cocktail that gets home sold. My name is Casey Sampson. I'm at Sampson Property, proudly at Sampson Property, proud of what Donnie and the team is doing over there. You're doing a great, great job. You can reach me at 703-508-2535. Or you can reach me at Casey at CaseySampson.com. We'll see you again next Thursday, hopefully from a place like this. I figured the golf course would be a nice, quiet place until I realized they have a lot of work people here that are mowing lawns and throwing leaves out. So we'll see you again next week on Coffee with Casey. Bye now.